Hello, it's Davis from the future. I have eliminated miter saw dust. This is a great setup. So I just got done cutting this many board feet of walnut for charcuterie boards and take a look. All this dust hood I haven't touched. So this is how much sawdust has accumulated with this new setup and it's great. You know how hard it is to conquer dust collection on a miter saw? It's next to impossible. The sawdust beast is leashed, and that's good enough for me. So we've had a lot of problems with this miter saw, and it's finally time to replace it. As you guys know, we've had a lot of problems with this miter saw. It's just, it's a homemade table. It's not made for this. It's a saw that I'm pushing way past its limits. I bought this saw used. It wasn't even brand new when I got it, so who knows how much this saw has seen. So, getting something new. So wave bye-bye. It's time for this miter saw to go to the big housing development in the sky. All right, well now that this beast is set up, I don't really want to do too much fine tuning because I need to get the new miter saw in there to adjust the heights and everything. So I'm gonna unbox that and we'll see how it looks all together. Our goal this holiday season has been to accept and deliver every holiday order that comes our way by Christmas. This has seemed pretty unattainable at times, but because we keep showing up every single day with perseverance, it's starting to look a little bit easier. We're starting to get a little bit closer and this new miter saw is really gonna help. Full disclosure, we don't take tool sponsors. We've taken sponsorships, but we don't take tool sponsors. So we've bought every tool that you see in our shop with business money. So when someone asks our opinion of uh, what tool they should buy, my first question is, well, what do you currently have? Do you have a version of that tool? And before I give a recommendation, I wanna make sure that I'm giving advice based on that person's needs and perspective. So what I'm gonna do is share with you our needs and our perspective so that you can sort of see why I bought the miter saw that I did. Maybe you're running a business, maybe you're selling some stuff. I mean, this is the busy season. So if you're thinking about what tools to invest in, if you're thinking about a miter saw, maybe you can make a better decision based on what I can share with you here. We have had the Bosch 12 inch sliding miter saw. A lot of people have this miter saw. You see it everywhere and it's on the dream list of tools for a lot of people. And rightly so. It's a really cool saw. It's got a lot of unique features. This saw has served us well. I don't want to misrepresent it. It's done a great job. It's a 12 inch saw. It's got this sliding knuckle feature uh, that a lot of other saws don't have that allows you to, to make sliding cuts, but there's no rails that stick out the back of a miter saw. A lot of us are in garage wood shops or, or we're in a cramped space and we just don't have four feet of depth to handle some of the other sliding saw mechanisms. But after several years of use, we have noticed a few problems with the saw and we needed to move away from it. Bottom line, big picture, I didn't feel comfortable using this saw anymore. From the very beginning, the first time I ever used this saw, I was honestly kind of shocked at how little power it had. I know it spins a big 12 inch blade, but I was expecting a little bit more power uh, behind the saw. My dad has a DeWalt 12 inch saw and it's just got what feels like twice the power at the handle than this saw feels like it has. That's totally subjective, it's not scientific. It's just something I noticed when I first started using the saw, I kinda wanted a little bit more power out of it. Let me be clear, we have abused this saw. We have been making it do things that it is not designed to do. It is not designed to run all day long cutting 
chunk after chunk after chunk of eight quarter domestic hardwood. This thing was made to cut construction grade pine and we have pushed it way beyond it, what it was intended to be used for. If you've been subscribed to our channel, you've seen that uh, I've been having some trouble lately with the saw blade getting pinched with the wood. There's a lot of factors going into that. The wood has a lot of tension in it. Um, I'm letting the saw stop. I'm not using the saw the most correct way. The saw seems a little bit underpowered. The belt that transfers the power from the motor to the blade is getting stretched out and old and worn out. That probably needed to be replaced. The dust collection was horrendous. I even made my own version of Drew Fisher's little uh, suction gate that goes behind uh, where you cut the wood and that helped but still sawdust just went everywhere when i made a bunch of cuts i'm staring at the lumber rack right now and i see 400 boards worth of material and thinking about doing that with the old saw honestly just did not make me feel comfortable the little knuckle mechanism is cute but it's not very sturdy there's a lot of flex and wobble in that saw we have way too many people counting on us for christmas gifts for me to risk hurting myself or not getting the boards built because I don't have the right tool. So as the only salesperson, I am working really hard to make sure that we have enough Christmas sales coming in. It started off really slow and, and now there's a ton of orders that are starting to come in and we're starting to get uh, a little overwhelmed as I speak. Our systems are built to handle this many boards. We've worked really hard to really bolster our systems, which is good. But this just requires a lot of building on Davis's part. It's great when I am able to sell 20, 30, 40, 50 boards, but that means Davis now has to build 20, 30, 40, 50 more cutting boards, which is no small feat for him. Sales and building have this kind of weird relationship because Davis doesn't have anything to build unless I sell things, but I have nothing to sell if Davis doesn't build enough to fulfill the orders. It's a weird symbiotic relationship, whatever you want to call it. But Davis and I are both working our butts off right now. So I don't really have as many clients that I'm prospecting now, but the ones I'm talking to are placing larger orders, which is good. It's just a learning experience. It's just getting used to a new type of sales and a new type of client altogether, which is fine. We're very excited, um, but I'm actually gonna go check out this uh, new saw Davis got because he does not stop talking about it. Can I show you my new saw? It's done. <laughs> yes. Are you ready? I'm re very ready. Okay, this is He's my new saw. so excited. It's my new miter saw. It's fantastic. Ooh, and I like the, wow. See, it's Wow. It's got lights and it's got a laser. This is so much And it's got this. rollers. This is my favorite part. Look at this. It's my favorite part too. Have you tried sliding across the rollers yourself yet? No. I don't think it's gonna work. Oh, no. <laughs> my balls. <laughs> I'm gonna need a minute. All right, so let me show you the new setup. This is the Makita 10 inch sliding compound miter saw. Uh, I think it's the model is like DXT or whatever the box says, but this is the miter saw that I have chosen for a couple of reasons. Number one, it seemed to do a lot for dust collection, which is huge for me. There's a big port back here to grab all the fine sawdust. There's also a chute right behind the blade like most miter saws have. So the combination of this and the larger chute I think would do a lot to pull in more dust. And it does. I hooked up my uh, Festool dust extractor to the back of this thing. And that combined with this canopy, which I'll talk about in a minute, really takes care of a lot more sawdust than it used to. Hello, it's Davis from the future. I have eliminated miter saw dust. This is a great setup. So I just got done cutting this many board feet of walnut for charcuterie boards and take a look. All this dust hood I haven't touched. So this is how much sawdust has accumulated with this new setup and it's great. So there's like nothing out here on the rails. There's very little on the floor. 
There's absolutely nothing in the air around me. My favorite thing about all this is that like five to 10 feet away from the miter saw, there's no like fine layer of dust like there used to be. Well, there is, but this isn't walnut. This is from something else. See, not walnut dust. This is a nice setup. Highly recommend if you're looking for a, a miter saw, but to do a lot of volume, this is a great setup. You know how hard it is to conquer dust collection on a miter saw? It's next to impossible. The sawdust beast is leashed, and that's good enough for me. I'm really happy with this miter saw, even the 10 inch blade because it's direct drive and I think the motor's a little nicer. Um, I get way more power in the wood than I did with the, uh, the Bosch one. So I feel more confident, I feel safer, the rails on this one are also forward facing so they don't stick out behind the saw. That's huge, so I can have it pretty close up to the wall without taking up a ton of shop space. It is still hooked up to the smaller Harbor Freight dust collector and then I'm gonna plug the shop vac up to it when I'm using the miter saw. That way we get all of the dust. And on the note of dust collection, this is the Russo 5000 lighted canopy thing. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not as impressed with this as I thought I would be. Do I look like a turtle? Jenny! What? Do I look like a turtle? Yes. <laughs> it does its job and I think it'll be fine. It's just, it's, it's sort of screwy the way that it works. It's only mounted on these two arms. And if you've got a dust collection hose on the bottom of it, because you're trying to capture dust from a miter saw, that's kind of the whole point. Um, it, tugs on the bottom of the tent and it sags. So I've got one of the extra legs for the miter saw station propping the hood up uh, so that I can still reach the handle and everything. But it, it, it works, but it's not as uh, simple of a solution as I would like. And I'm using a PowerTech mini scoop or whatever that I got on Amazon. I don't know, I read some reviews and they said, just set one of those down in there and you can have the dust collector suck a little better. This hood, I'm not impressed with. There's actually fabric in the way of the the hole for the dust collector and it was going to it was going to block sawdust. It was a really stupid design. And then on the note of the miter saw stand itself, I was really excited about this. I wanted something that could adjust in height. I wanted something that had rollers, which have been really nice just on a couple of test cuts that I've made. You can move this whole board just with one hand. I wanted something made of steel that had rollers. And when I was looking online, I found this thing. It's called the Lee Unlimited Power Bench. So if any of the guys from Lee Unlimited are watching this, I love you. I love this product. The way that this works is fascinating. The fact that it can like fold up and roll away from the job site it, and go on like uneven terrain and you can adjust the leg, it's, it's brilliant. But it's gonna be stationary for us. I just wanted something out of steel with rollers and this was the best thing I found in the budget I was looking for. The specific model I got is the Power Bench Pro and it comes with two extension tables. You can actually put that one against the wall. You can put it on that end and get 10 feet on the in feed and 10 feet on the out feed, or you can put it on the in feed side if you're doing like really long pieces of wood or metal. I think all in with shipping and the extra accessories for just the, the, the power bench, I think came out to like $1,500 with tax and everything. So not too bad. These rollers cost extra, but in my opinion, it's worth it. That's the reason I got this thing. It's plenty sturdy. I mean, it racks a little bit, but it's made of steel, so I think it'll handle more weight than the old one will. You have to take the saw out if you wanna fold it up and roll it away, so that is one downside if you're considering using this for mobile stuff, but I don't think this is ever gonna move. One thing I will say about the power bench, there is a lot of good salesmanship and copy written, but there are no instructions. It comes with no instructions. And that's a lie, there's this document that somebody wrote on Microsoft Word, but, there are no setup videos online. There are videos that show you how to take it from storage to like standing it up, but there are no videos on like how to assemble it the first time. There's written instructions, which are fine, but they like don't make sense with each other. So here's this. So like after step four above, there's no step four. All your steps are letters. There, there's no step four anywhere. So it's referencing things that aren't in the instructions and that's just, 
that's one example of the general feel of these instructions. But I absolutely love this thing. It's so nice. I just wish the setup and instructions match the quality of the tool itself. I don't know, maybe I'm just an idiot, but... For anyone curious, I will have links down in the description for all of the products that I've mentioned in this video. So the dust collection is better. Combined with the new in-feed out-feed rollers means that this is our new ultimate miter saw setup and probably the last miter saw we'll ever have. That being said, I know a ton of you are telling me to get an upcut saw. That is what this should be in the long term. Like that's the tool that I need but I gotta build boards like now. I can't wait for a new tool to come in and the electrician to wire it and then me learn the new tool. When we've already got a process set up for these boards, I just needed to replace the miter saw so that I felt safe. In this case, it's gonna keep us moving quickly through the production phase of this amazing 2022 holiday season. Thanksgiving is already next week. Wait, really? Yeah. <laughs> Next, next week like oh, is Thanksgiving. Man. I know. How many boards do you have left to build? I got like two or three hundred. <laughs> you think we're going to make it? Well, we start delivering in December. Well, we got a couple clients that need boards before Thanksgiving. Oh, no. Ah, that's okay. We'll finish and then we'll just nose to the grindstone and then we'll be able to sit back and just eat a lot of turkey. Ask me how I do it. I just stick